I wonder if you've ever tried zoom burst photography before. It's probably not the most common type of photography for beginners and amateurs. It's something that you see and it maybe doesn't, well, it doesn't really work with every type of scenario. But if you've never tried it before, you've never heard of it, you think I'm speaking a foreign language, then stick around. I'm gonna try and show you a little bit of a simple demonstration as to how you can try this out. So a zoom burst photography, what are you gonna need? A zoom lens, that, that's pretty much the, the kind of the ins and outs of it really, but you can get different types of zoom lenses. Um, I've used some before which are electronically operated, sometimes the kit lenses, uh, where you actually just have a button on the side where you can zoom in and zoom out, a little bit similar to compact lenses. Um, they're a little bit slower, they don't react really as quick enough as you possibly may want. I mean, you can give it a try, certainly, but generally the more common type of uh, zoom lens where you can twist the actual uh, the, the zoom ring and kind of zoom in and zoom out at your own pace that's the type of ones that would generally work better in this scenario and um, to help with that to help with a bit more stability a tripod is always going to be very very useful i'm going to kind of set up a little scenario in front of us here and bring down some light and actually just show you kind of using the camera using the focus ring um sorry using the zoom ring just to how to get that effect and whether it's best to be starting close in and zooming out or doing it the opposite way really what's the pros and cons of it so let's get started so i've got myself set up here um you may just have to ignore the fact that i'm on a different camera up here now and i've had to switch over just because i've got the most appropriate zoom lens here and i didn't have for that camera there and this cable itself here is effectively running my microphone so ignore those aspects otherwise we've got ourselves set up and i found a little fidget spinner i've just balanced a couple of batteries behind it and um, i thought it'd be a nice kind of bright colorful element to to kind of use as our main prop let's say so in terms of the camera settings what i'm going to do is slow down the shutter speed because effectively as we zoom away we need a little bit of time not massive amounts of times but in terms of photography a long enough time to get the movement in here so I'm just gonna slow the shutter speed down here right let me just set myself up I'm gonna bring it down to around about let's try around about a third of a second or so um, we may just have to adjust the ISO and um, basically just to make sure that the um, the exposure is as balanced as possible because we still we don't necessarily want it to be kind of over bright we don't want it to be underexposed we're really kind of looking for a decent level of exposure um, I've picked out the fidget spinner because it's got a nice little circle in the center too and I'm going to use that to kind of frame up my shot basically use that as the focus point because Zoom bursts aren't just about a case of blurring motion or giving a sense of blurred motion. I think we still need to find some element of focus or some relevance or some type of object or point of in the image that we can look at and understand and refer to to help us give context to the rest of the shot. So it's not just a case of uh, whacking it onto any kind of focus setting. I think in this instance, because we've got a fairly small subject and we've got a fairly small central um, element to it, I'm just gonna use a spot focus, put it right into the middle and take some shots from there. So I'm going to set myself up, take some shots, and effectively it is dead simple. What we're going to do is zoom in. So we're going to zoom in, fill our frame up entirely, and as we take that shot, as soon as we take that shot, pressing down the button, we've got to zoom out. So it's going to be an instantaneous action, which is why having it on a flat surface is great, or having it on a tripod. So all we're doing is zooming in, half pressing down on the focus, so we're locking focus on the center of our subject, and then as we take the shot, it's got to be a simple quick motion. This is why the electronic zooms can sometimes be a little bit awkward because they can be a little bit slower to start. You may therefore need a longer shutter speed to help with that, but they are a little bit jerky. And there you can see there's going to be a little bit of movement in the camera itself when we take it. But if we can try and keep that as stable as possible, try and use as few fingers as possible. Don't really want your whole hand moving it. Just a couple of fingers if you can, just to sort of zoom in, keep them in position, and then zoom out. Just try it a couple of times over. You can even try it invertly by starting off wide and then zooming in. The effect itself may not be as powerful, generally starting in and then coming out works a little bit better to bring out those, those speed lines, those lines of motion as light is being dragged towards the wider lens. Um, but give it a go either way. Hopefully you'll enjoy it and you'll find it kind of quite useful because you can try it wherever you go. You really, really can. All you need is that slightly slower shutter speed, something fairly stable in terms of whether it be a tripod or a surface and a good solid subject, uh, subject that we can kind of pull out those lines of motion. But I hope you enjoy it. Give it a try. <laughs> 